Milk Outside a Bag of Milk Outside a Bag of Milk is a sequel to the visual novel Milk Inside a Bag of Milk Inside a Bag of Milk. It's something that I only read recently, but it's one of my favorite games ever. Milk's eerie atmosphere and compelling central character make it a one-of-a-kind novel. From the art to its beautiful soundtrack, the allure of this series is powerful, and I left feeling touched on a deep emotional level. It's one of those games that's hard to grasp. Even after reading it, I felt like I hadn't finished exploring the full extent of what it had to say. That's why I'm making this now. I feel like in some way, I need to process my feelings on the game. My thoughts are not complete, they're not coherent, and I know that I'll get something wrong inevitably. But the important thing is that they're my thoughts. I think most people have their own thoughts on what happens or what it means, so if mine are different then I'd love for you to share your opinion. If you've never read Milk, just know that this video was written under the assumption that you have, so tread carefully. It's truly one of my favorite things ever. I wouldn't want to steal your first impression or rid you of your own interpretation. Milk is a very intimate game. Its message and portrayal of mental health are very touching and mean a lot. So without drawing this out further, here are my loosely organized thoughts on Milk Outside a Bag of Milk, Outside a Bag of Milk. A game such as this is very multifaceted and thus is extremely hard to begin speaking on. You can approach it from countless angles, so I believe the most natural way to start is to tell my experience as I started playing. A friend of mine recommended the novel with a little synopsis, so without knowing much about it, I booted up the first game and started reading. The only goal of the game is to assist this unnamed girl in buying milk, playing as a voice in her head. For the duration of the video, I'll refer to her as the milk girl. The opening track, Milk creates a unique sense of uncertainty. It's nothing remarkable, but the darkness of it certainly sells the atmosphere. It's immediately clear that Milk Girl is deeply disturbed. Her reasons for buying milk are unclear, and that uncertainty, coupled with her general mannerisms, makes it known that this character has issues. Whether you start with the first or the second game, that fact is obvious. Her mental illness is the most elaborately conceived structure of her character. To me, she feels like a dichotomy, a split between complexity and under emptiness. There's something deeper there, a more nuanced and complex look at the mind of a thoroughly disturbed person. But in my attempts to analyze her character, I couldn't find a coherent picture. Her dialogue conveys a lot of emotions and intricacies, but with how it's presented, thinking about it makes me feel empty, like I haven't really gotten anywhere. And just enough info is withheld to give you an idea of what's wrong while still presenting a mystery. I believe this distance between my understanding and my feelings regarding her to be an intentional separation. In some sense, this makes her a perfect metaphor for depression itself. There's a lot there to feel, but also an underlying feeling of emptiness. A lack of being that you can't quite grasp. You feel a lot, but it's almost always impossible to understand. Through my own experiences of depression, I oftentimes feel a remarkably similar way. Despite feeling like a lot has happened underneath, I mostly feel separated from my feelings and end up just feeling hollow. With my depression at least, there's a relationship between my thoughts and my feelings. She strikes this line perfectly as a mix of the two that manages to capture my feelings in a uniquely potent expression. This feeling is a perfect match for the soundtrack. The indecisive, wandering, and empty mix of these tracks is the same tone that the milk roll exudes. In the game, the player doesn't have many dialogue options to ask her, so most of her character has to be cryptically pieced together through what little information we're given. This delicate structure makes her more interesting than a typical character. She's so simple on a fundamental level that she doesn't really need a grand journey or a story arc. There's a mystery and allure brought just by presenting her naturally. This makes her much more interesting than forcing details of her mental illness down your throat. Instead, implying these issues and allowing you to bond and connect with her on an intimate level. She has depth and complexity to her character that's built on this. It isn't just withholding information from the player to entice you to continue reading, but an internal struggle of trying to understand the root of her issues. Overcomplicating the story would do a disservice to it because it would just draw away from the central pillar that the whole game is built on, which is her. I think this idea is presented in Inside a Bag, but is much more pronounced in Outside a Bag. Which is what led me to think this way. 
The first game overall feels mostly like an introduction, presenting the interesting ideas that this character has, but overall, it's just a little starting point. The length of it doesn't do it any favors either. It's around 15 to 20 minutes in length, meaning it's just a short episode in your life, not a deep exploration by any means. But this 20 minutes feels like much longer. The slow pace and the atmosphere invites you to take it slowly, soaking in all the game has to offer. Milk inside the bag constantly pauses at points for random events, like encountering a mysterious customer, or counting the amount of steps the milk girl has taken. This is a weird choice for a game that only has 20 minutes of running time, but I think it works. Playing out these mundane scenarios elongates the duration, making it feel extremely slow. This lets us soak in and understand how something as simple as buying milk can prove to be a challenging endeavor for someone as dysfunctional as she is. I think that the first game really shines when Milk Girl starts thinking about what her place is in life, asking leading questions about how and what she feels. On her aimless walk, she starts to open up to you about her feelings and things like her drug use. She talks about how the experience of seeing her dad's suicide scarred her, explaining that she only sees in red because of it. As soon as she starts, the game stops you. You have no choice but to reject her, and are forced to advise her to go back home. The moments that follow this as she enters the house are chilling. It's not scary or overly terrifying, but there's something off about the interaction with her mom, and the atmosphere of the scene is creepy. I was extremely eager to jump into the next installment upon finishing the first, but I knew that if I got too excited, I would rush through it. I felt like I would devour every line of dialogue in one night, so I decided to break it into a longer process. That way I could stretch out my experience and really break down what it meant. From the outset, it's clear that the quality of the game is a lot higher. There's a beautiful opening animation, a new art style, and the game has around 3 hours with all the endings. The general sound design and music are a lot better, with the extra 2 hour long soundtrack being a great ambient experience that I recommend checking out if you have time. The first visual on screen is a look into the mind of the milk girl and displays the new visual style. The more concrete and clear look helps establish the game as a bit more serious and grounded than the last. It's a little tone shift, but I think it's necessary considering how the game reads a little differently. The drawings look amazing, every frame is wallpaper worthy, and... I do mean that. It opens as Milk Girl returns to her house after going for milk. Out of an irrational fear that a dead body may be in her house, she runs into the kitchen. Bursting in, she's greeted by... Nothing. Only a bag of milk staring at her. Her terrified expression coupled with the track Dark Kitchen Music vividly paints a momentary pause in tension. Nothing has happened yet, but something is coming. The mom as a figure overpowers the milk girl. Her formless mask and expressionless mask show no humanity as it starts to attack her. The pain is overbearing as she longs for death. The mom continues to push her, ordering her never to drink milk again. I've seen a video that suggests this may be an EpiPen, presenting the idea that she's allergic to milk. It's a fascinating interpretation of this scene, but I have another take, and I'll speak on what that means more thoroughly later on. She retreats into the safe space of her room. The atmosphere of this part is a lot different from the atmosphere of the first parts of the game, especially when juxtaposed against the frightening opener. It's a lot more cozy and emptier, but it encapsulates the freedom and safety she feels in her room, a safe space where she can escape her woes, 
But there's another side to it. She's rotting in her room. Yes, there's a sense of comfort and ease, but there's a definite lack of substance. A perfect blend between leading a happy existence and falling into the abyss of depression. This feeling is spearheaded by her attitude. I've mostly been setting up Milk outside the bag because the game really starts to unravel Milk Girl when you get to this point. Milk Girl is a characterization of mental illness. She's not a direct look at any one disorder, but rather a broad stand-in for mental health problems, which lets her become representative of the struggle in a more general sense. Milk Girl's struggle is inherent to the experience of mental health issues. This aspect is more apparent in Outside of Egg and Milk, as her cute design makes her easier to empathize with. Another moment that captivated me was the scene of Milk Girl standing by her sink with her drugs. She disregards her prescription, instead choosing to make up some sort of pretend medicine and imagine herself as better. The repeated use of the same wine gets more and more depressing as each repetition hammers in how much worse it's really getting. This makes her feel lonely, as she wishes for a friend. Milk Outside a Bag has a much more interesting structure than that of Inside a Bag. While the first game wasn't very interactive, this one has more winding paths and ways to poke it around. The opening to it has the same linear structure, but once you're introduced as the player, choice is thrown into the mix as you guide what happens from this point onward, and this video is structured in the same way. I've examined the game chronologically and now we're getting into where it branches. You may notice that we're approaching the end of the video, but that's not the case. Milk Outside of Bag Milk isn't a linear story, but a big winding ball of paths. A spiral of clouded realities and thoughts that tie together as one knotted existence. An entity that only makes sense as one story when taking them all into context. This is Milk Outside of Bag and Milk Outside of Bag and Milk. An experience that I hold beyond dear to myself, and I feel like in some way, I should embody that way of storytelling in my analysis. This video was designed to be interactive, just like a point and click adventure game. If I did set it up right, which I probably didn't, there should be three different segments that all loop back to an ending video. Just make sure you watch all of them before you finish. This might not work depending on what device you're viewing on, but the different choices will be linked in the description. I've also attached an unlisted video that will play through the segments without needing to choose them if you would prefer. This version isn't the correct order to watch the segments in, but it's the one that I put together personally. These different choices should be on screen now. Just pick whatever video seems the best. <laughs> 